So you want to send out a market survey to find out if people might buy your new product, but you really don't know where to start or what questions to ask. Well, you're in luck. I got your back. I'm Kalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service, giving you the tools to grow your business. We have back with us this week, CEO of Blue Dot Data Intelligence, Laren Peart. Welcome back, Lauren. Good to have you again. Thank you. Thank you. So the last time you were here, you spoke about market research and the importance of it, the benefits of it. Now, today, you're going to tell us how to conduct our own market survey, which is one type of research because there are several different types. Sure. But if I want to use the Google Forms, as you suggested in the last episode, how should I go about it? Thanks. Um, so, so just to back up a bit so there's there's two methodologies primarily so there's quantitative surveys which is what you do on google forms and then the qualitative which allows you to be you know to probe a little bit more which is you sitting down and asking your friends you know what do you think about this or your customers what do you think about this so it's more um you get more qualitative data and you get to drill down um a little bit more when you do that type of qualitative type type study um, on the quant side, which is what you use when you want to get numbers and, you know, if you wanted to know what your market share was, um, you would do quantitative to get hard figures. Um, like I suggested earlier, you can use Google Forms or there's free tools like SurveyMonkey and SurveyGizmo, et cetera, that you can, once you sign up and you've figured out what your objectives are, um, which is important. So you have to figure out what it is that you want to find out or or as like I like to say, what decisions do you need to make that you don't have the data for? Or what keeps you up at night as an entrepreneur? Right? Um, so first you you know, once you once you've identified what your objectives are or i.e. what it is that you want to find out, then you build the questions around that. So it's always good to of course start off with demographic information. So you want, you know, um, gender, age, sex, et cetera, as much of that information as possible, which will then allow you to, to allow you to, to target. Um, also, um, you want to collect some type of lifestyle or psychographic information. So um, to, to understand personality um, and uh, for psychographic and then lifestyle, would be, you know, you know, what do these people do on a daily basis? Um, that type of information, and then you add your questions around specifically what object, what your objectives are. So, if you wanted, for example, to find out, um, you know, would would a particular would your customers buy this new product? Then you build the questions around that, and don't ask, you know, leading questions. Be very um, general about it. Um, in research, we might, you might, we tend to ask, um, to, in order to arrive at one insight, we ask probably three questions around it, um, to, you know, just to, to ensure that there's no bias or it's not being skewed or anything in terms of how we ask the questions. So, in general, um, give me an example of that. So, three questions to gain one insight. So, give me an example. How, how would I do that? Um, so if we, if we want to figure out what 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 your socioeconomic bracket is, we ask education. Um, so you know, um, what's your highest level of education? We ask um, where you live, and then a pointed question um, around your your income. Um, you know, so instead of a lot of the cases, we don't just ask income outright. So we ask age as an as it can be used to determine socioeconomic status, dependent on the scenario. Um, schooling, so education level, um, where you live, um, area you work, we might ask what you drive if you do drive. So in order to determine just that one insight of is this person somebody that's a good fit for an investment um, bank 
targeting or is this person you know somebody who is in a lower income um, demographic as an example um, Mm, I see. That's that's very so. That's what I always ask you all these million questions before you actually start answering <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> what it is yeah. that you sign up for for the survey. Right. All right yeah. So let's say I'm trying to get feedback on a book or yeah. a new product. Right, let's say I've I've launched a new product and I want to get feedback from my customers about this new product. So my customers are part of my mailing list. I sent them an email and i want to know if they like the product what types of questions should i ask um again you could just ask all oh, right you know but but you also all oh, right do you like this product but you also want to you want to understand the category so for example if your product is in um the book space like you said um you want to understand what the consumption what we'll call consumption occasions um, for those customers are, how often do they read books? Do they purchase books? Do they, um, do they, are they on audible? Do, are they an audiobook type person? Um, what is the average spend on books when they do buy frequency? Are they influenced by their parents or their peers to buy books? It's, it can be a whole, I mean, just, just to arrive at, arrive at that one insight or that one nugget, you could ask 20 questions, um, primarily around um just to arrive at that one one question one one insight sorry okay so really if i'm conducting research i really need to sit down and plan you what to i think, want to find out because yes. i might be thinking do you like this book yes or no you're saying that's not the best approach no because you want to, you want to you want to build a profile you want to understand the profile of the of the of your of your consumers first you want to understand um deeply or as much as possible um the type of books in this scenario that that they read um how often do they read um do they like how the pages you know how the pages are flipped you know um, one one thing comes to mind is um i think it was done on the produce um yogurts right um done on the yogurt maker or you could use Lope, yoplay but one of them um they they thought it would have been very cool for them to to change how the packaging of the the yogurt was, um, and they removed the the lid. They didn't have the lid on it anymore, and they lost. I think it was forty percent of sales because people like to lick the, the lid, lid of <laughs> yeah. the yogurt. Exactly, um, you know. So again, I heard was, another example too about um, Cheetos. Yes. The so yeah. People, right. They made a version that doesn't stick to your fingers. Right. Hated it because part of the experience is licking your fingers. Exactly. Exactly. So we we do actually a lot of a lot of our clients who are in that space. We do a lot of testing for them before launch, um, to I you know to understand are people even going to like this? What what is their behavior? Do they um do they add two pinches of salt? You know, like just everything. Com completely um we we follow people around um with permission in supermarkets um just to understand you know what what do they pick up what they don't pick up what do they look at how long do they spend looking at the prices do they do they are they price sensitive and and then what is the profile of that consumer who is price sensitive um or are they just you know what's the difference between the customer or the consumer so again um understanding what that difference is so customers for example um would be if your mom buys you stocks trying to keep it um within this context if your if your mother buys stocks for you if your wife buys um some stocks for you then she's the customer but you're actually the consumer or if you or if your wife buys you some beer she's the customer but you're the consumer um, and then how you market and target those two groups are is completely different because the motivation for your wife buying your beer is completely different from why you're drinking the beer. So understanding the dynamic between customer and consumer and the consumption occasions and the frequency and you know what motivates you know your wife to buy that for you and all of that is from market research um, is is important. All right, so it sounds like there are a million different questions that you could ask people. 
but I don't know about you, but for me, if I'm taking a survey and I feel like, okay, the survey is too long now, they're asking me too much, I'm just going to abandon the survey. I can't bother answering any more questions. Mm -hmm. So what's that sweet spot? What's the ideal number of questions that should be on a survey? Um, I, I'd say the sweet spot is, is no more than 20 questions and, and no more than a five-minute survey. Of course, um, we're, we're guilty of that at Blue Dot. We, we, we have surveys that, that last pretty long because there's just so much to collect. But I think for, for an SME, a small business, um, you, can, you can get away with, with, with 15 to 20 questions um, and, and really get the information that, that you need. Um, you can also incentivize the, the respondents. So um, you can give away phone cards or you can give them some sort of um, discount on the, the exact product that you're trying to, to find out about or some sort of promotion to incentivize them to just do the survey. Um, explain to them why, is it, why it's important. You know, you know, research is important. You're doing this research in, in, order, to, in order to help you to tar better target um the products and services to them um that helps that works in a lot of the cases when people understand the reason behind conducting the, the market research well thank you again lauren you've given us a lot to work with so we can now go out there and get our own surveys conduct our own surveys and then when we money turn up then we will call blue dot <laughs> so actually we 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 we're, we're actually we, we've brought the cost of surveys down um significantly at blue dot because of Yay. our use of technology so um you can do surveys now for as little as a hundred and fifty thousand dollars or less which coming from a million two million dollars is is a far is a far um, is, a, is a big discount so um, but we're flexible. Anybody out there, just give us a call, talk to us, find us on, on social media. What are your numbers and email? Right. So, so my email is the dot at blue dot insights.com, but we're on, we're on all social media platforms at blue dot insights. So B L U E D O T I N S I G H T S. Thank you once again, Lauren. Thank you so Always much. I appreciate you. it. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. And now here's a recap of some of Lauren's key points. Gathering data such as your consumer's age, location, and income can help with product marketing. Try not to use more than 20 questions in your survey. It shouldn't take more than five minutes to complete your survey. So now that you know how to do it, what surveys are you going to send out next? Comment below. That's it for this episode of Money Moves, JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Visit their website at eximbankja.com and visit my website, kalilareynolds.com, for a summary of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Until next time. <laughs>